Welcome to the Devil's Digest Week 5 Game Preview. Arizona State hitting the road to take on number 6 USC at the LA Coliseum on Saturday night. I'm Nick Borgia. Alongside me is our publisher, Hode Urbino. And Hode, the opening the Pac-12 play last week marked the first game under interim head coach Sean Aguano for the Sun Devils. Obviously, he's been trying to change all this culture and bring such a positive direction to this program. But after such a brutal loss to Utah last week, where do you think this team stands from a mental standpoint? Well, I'll tell you, Nick, it uh, goes without saying it's imperative for this team really to shake off that loss to Utah as much as, as quickly as possible. And I think uh, hearing uh, the coaches and players talk uh, to, to the media since Saturday, uh, seeing practices, it's, it seems like they really are not um, throwing themselves a pity party or anything like that. Uh, granted, there was a lot of hope, a lot of optimism uh, with, with Sean Aguano at the helm now, even as, even as an interim head coach. And as Mike Tyson, I think, once said, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. And uh, when you look at that game against Utah, uh, ASU uh, on defense definitely got punched uh, quite a bit, uh, quite often by, by, by the visitors and on offense really wasn't able to do much. So whatever game plan, whatever aspirations to say in general, the Sun Devils had for that game uh, really just went by, went by the wayside pretty early uh, in the contest. But that, 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 that game is history. And uh, you, if you're a Sun Devil fan, you hope that uh, Arizona State, uh, the coaches, the players were able to, to really gain those valuable lessons from Utah. And it's a brand new challenge, uh, just as challenging of a team when you look uh, at uh, facing the number six team in the country in USC, undefeated so far, and you're playing on their home turf. Uh, definitely, uh, it's gonna, definitely an obstacle that uh, Arizona State's gonna have to conquer. And uh, we'll see how much they learned uh, from, from the last game and also from what USC did against Oregon State, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. And maybe uh, ASU can uh, just uh, put all that into a more effective game plan this time around. Well, going off of what you just mentioned about this 2022 season for the Trojans, you kind of have to split it into two separate parts. First three games, some dominant performances and wins to earn them that top 10 ranking. But last week, just squeaking by the Beavers in Corvallis, 17 to 14 was the final score, came down to the wire. So the question is, who knows what kind of offense that ASU is going to see on Saturday night in L.A.? Yeah, absolutely. That's an uh, excellent point, Nick. And I think a lot of fans even in L.A. right now are asking, uh, was uh, this uh, USC offense all smoke and mirrors the first uh, three weeks? Because, uh, like you said, uh, they barely squeaked by against Oregon State. And look, I, I know that Corvallis is not an easy place to win at, especially when you go to the November night game, something that ASU fans and beat writers are quite familiar with. But but overall, uh, it's definitely not an easy, easy place uh, uh, to, to win at. I think somebody told me from the USC side that USC uh, up until last week actually had uh, three consecutive losses in Corvallis uh, leading up uh, uh, to, to that contest. So maybe not a surprise that USC struggled that much. But like you said, there's really stark differences uh, for what the, the USC offense was able to achieve the first three games. And they played Fresno State and Stanford. I mean, not really, you know, bottom of the barrel teams by any means. Uh, what they're able to do against those opponents and against Oregon State definitely was, uh, definitely was an eye opener. Uh, Caleb Williams their uh, very talented transfer quarterback from Oklahoma. I think had 10 incompletions in the first half alone. Did not only pass for a touchdown uh, really, really late uh, in the game. Obviously sealed the win, but uh, definitely not a typical game by him uh, by any means. I think actually the ground game for USC is, is what, what, what really bailed them out. And they got uh, two of the best uh, inner transfers in the Pac-12 by far and Travis Dye from Oregon and, and Austin, Jones from, Austin Jones from Stanford. So it really was maybe more like some, one, of those, one of those old school school uh, USC teams were, uh, were able to uh, really uh, win the game with uh, excellent defense and really able to, to, to grind, in, uh, grind in on the ground. And just uh, when they able to hit that key play, Caleb Williams to who else but Jordan Addison, uh, the $9 million NIL wide receiver from Pittsburgh, like, like some may claim. Uh, uh, no surprise, I guess, that he actually uh, scores, a, scores the touchdowns for USC. And look, and obviously the big question is like, okay, what can Arizona State and really other USC opponents do? down the road can really take from this game. Uh, can they really just duplicate the Oregon State blu uh, blueprint? Or is it really going to be uh, a matter of uh, that this really was an aberration by the, by the USC offense? And uh, they're, they're going to go back to the form that they showed uh, from, from week one to week three. I think uh, really with the ASU defense, it's uh, one of those uh, cases where they have to really worry about what, what they can do regardless of the opponent. And there's been a lot of talk uh, dating back to last Saturday and also this week in press conferences about the lack of pressure from the front four and from the front and further from the uh, front seven for that matter. 
the, the fact that ASU is not blitzing or when they are blitzing, they're not, they're not, they're not really doing that effectively. And the question is, I mean, what is their approach going to be against USC? I mean, are they going to maybe fear the uh, passing game uh, less, than, less than the running game and maybe drop into more, you know, zone coverages, maybe more nickel coverages? Or maybe really they're going to think that Caleb Williams' uh, shaky game that he had uh, last week maybe was not an aberration, maybe isn't kind of some kind of rut right now. So maybe maybe you are going to stack the box and really take your chances with Caleb Williams uh, really beating, beating with his arm. And Caleb Williams is another uh, talented dual threat quarterback in this in this uh, Pac-12. So obviously ASU is going to need to contain him also in that regard. So I'm curious to see what kind of defensive uh, alignment Arizona State uh, uh, comes out. And even more curious to see if what we saw from the USC offense last weekend was that a fluke or was it uh, maybe some uh, chinks in the armor just revealing themselves more and more and maybe Arizona State can take advantage of that. Well, you touched on the USC defense for a second there, and it's no secret that the USC defense kind of been the Achilles heel of this team in recent history, especially last season. But this season, some argue that might be what won them the game last week in Corvallis. So what's your reaction to this surprise of the Pac-12 with the USC defense this year? Yeah, I think their uh, defensive coordinator, Alec, um, Alex Grinch, uh, one, of the, one of the best defensive coordinators and people uh, might remember, he was back, uh, I, th I think, about five or so years ago at Washington State. And Washington State, a team that's been never known for a good defense, he really elevated that unit uh, quite, a, uh, quite a few levels uh, during, the, during that year with head coach uh, Mike Leach uh, back then in the helm. But uh, this defense absolutely won in the game against Oregon State. You can just take a quick look at the box score and the fact that Chase Nolan, the quarterback for Oregon State, not only uh, did not throw any touchdowns, well, he actually had four interceptions. This USC team has 11 interceptions on the year. They have 14 sacks on the year. Again, this is just only going by only only for four games. Those are absolutely uh, great numbers. It's definitely a defense that kind of lives by the sword, dies by the sword. In other words, it's being being ultra aggressive, maybe sometimes over pursuing. But uh, let's face it, right now that approach has not hurt USC at all. One thing that's kind of interesting is that on the one hand, um, they're, they're very susceptible against against the run. Uh, they gave 160 yards, uh, even in a win against uh, Oregon State. They're just lucky that the Beavers' uh, passing game was really non-existent. And and on the on the year, they're average. They're averaging, or I should say, yielding an average of 100 uh, over 170 yards a game. So when you look at this Arizona State team, I think uh, as really uh, their approach should be. Uh, when, when facing a team like USC, especially on the road, is, is really to control the clock and really, and really just try to move the chains more on the ground than, than they can in the air. So Xavier Valade and even design runs for quarterback Emory Jones are probably uh, some of the more popular play calls that we're going to see on Saturday. I think we're going to see a lot of two tight end sets, maybe more for protection rather than actually being part of the passing game. But that's the approach I expect from uh, Arizona State. And uh, obviously the uh, peculiar aspect uh, of this game when you talk about the USC defense is uh, seeing uh, in the Trojan uniform, Eric Gentry. I think the one player that Arizona State suffered with the most in terms of a player being lost for the transfer portal, he's having an outstanding season for USC, leading them in tackles. Ironically, playing middle linebacker again on a defense that uh, has really been pretty porous against the run. So I'm curious to see if uh, Eric Gentry is going to have a little extra juice on Saturday. And uh, maybe the ASU players, uh, maybe notably fullback uh, Case Hatch, is going to have a little extra juice when, the, when they're going to face, their, their, their own, face his old teammate on Saturday night. But uh, yeah, nonetheless, uh, I think if Arizona State is going to have any chance of surprising over here, they're really going to have to punish USC on the ground. And again, that is really something that we saw from the Trojan opponents all season long so far. Well, we'll see if the ASU offense can muster more than six rushing yards this year or six yards on the ground. But it's another week, another game that this ASU team is just a heavy, heavy underdog. What do they need to do to at least stay competitive or put up a respective performance uh, in comparison to the past two weeks? What do they need to have happen? Yeah, it's, it's really, really been tough when you talk about just the uh, money line aspect of it, so to speak. Uh, last week against Utah, two touchdown uh, underdog at home. Uh, this week on the road against against USC, over three touchdown um, underdog. And the question is, uh, can Arizona State, like you said, just, just make it respectable? Because I think with the talent disparity, it's really going to be hard to come away from Los Angeles with the win. I think if Arizona State uh, is able to have the running game uh, really work for them, work for them well, especially in the first half, I think uh, they can slow down the pace it can keep things uh you know some, uh, somewhat close the question is again is is this usc offense going to break out and and have their passing game and their running game for that matter uh really play at the level we saw from week one to week three or maybe they're kind of quote unquote stuck in the rut uh from from last week against oregon state 
and really make matters a little easier for Arizona State in that regard. Uh, maybe it's a game that starts a little closer than, than we expect, but I, I do see U, 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 USC pulling away. Can Arizona State keep it re respective? I, I think so. I'm predicting uh, a 41 to 25 at USC win. All righty. Well, thank you so much, Hode, for all of your pregame, in-game, and post-game coverage. Keep it locked in at devilsdigest.com. Also drop a follow at Devil's Digest because we're gone. We'll be in L.A. We're making the trip, so all the coverage will be there. For Hode Urbino and the rest of Devil's Digest, I'm Nick Borgia, and we'll see you Saturday night in L.A.